Hello, I'm Jonathan Robert Curry, also known as the John Robert. I am the owner of the John Robert Travel Experience and co-founder of Yacht Club, Yacht Club Company. Hey, it's Kellen. And today on Diversified Game, this is going to be a very easy flowing interview because they might have cloned me y'all you know and just had a younger version uh, I don't know but I have and that's why I have my Berminda stuff because like I was telling John off air he wasn't about to come on air from something he might have got from the real Tim Buck too and I just you know look regular smeggler like Africa is not in the DNA and we don't invest so I had my good stuff on for him you know, some say the sexiest man on the internet. He's he's modeling, posing, going from country to country. You guys don't hate, you know, don't say, well, how can he afford it? He's going to give us the game and show us how, not just how he does it, but how you might want to replicate and get the game. You know, I'm sure he has a consulting fee for those who are interested. I have the John Roberts giving us the game today. How are you doing, my bro? Oh, thank you for having me, man excited to be here man i'm blessed that you're here i don't know in what language i should say hello should i say molo sabona mulibonji you know uhaligani um how far you now I, I didn't know because but you're in cali so we can talk english cali, and i always tell people i'm a, from around the way that's who i all stay true to so hola what's up what's good all that works <laughs> Well, your your Instagram, which, you know, when they tell us um, men, especially, you know, they say, oh, black men, it's hard to get, you know, you, what you have to do to to be popular. I mean, you're doing all those things. And I hope everybody follows you because you are really showing how travel just you got a smile on your face, the different experiences. But give folks the game, because I don't know if you're a blue blood. I don't know if um, Bezos gave you one hundred million dollars like he gave Van Jones, right? But give us the game on how this all began for you. So, you know, both of my parents uh, were both missionaries. And so um, they were never missionaries together. They were both missionaries separate. And they both had a global understanding and perspective of the world. And that was something they always desired for me. And so I can recall um, the first time I got a passport, I actually was doing a mission trip and uh, in England of all places. And it was great. And I think, you know, just from that and my parents always traveling and always making travel part of our life, it just naturally um, became something that I enjoyed doing and fell in love with. Um, and so that's kind of gotten me to the John Robert. And then I think the launch pad was after a, a, <laughs> a horrific relationship I wanted to find a healthy way to rediscover who I was and also to spend some time with myself. Um, and one of the great things I tell people about traveling solo, it exposes so much of you to yourself. You know, oftentimes we don't give ourselves time to sit with ourselves. We're at work, we're around people, we're around friends. Um, being a hundred miles away from home, a thousand miles away from home, 200,000 miles away from home, wherever you're going by yourself really allows you to tap in to some things that you may not even knew that you had, um, good, bad, or indifferent. And so uh, that's how the journey got started. Um, and I've always been doing what I've been doing. It's just, I've got an audience now. And I think uh, one of my first moments where I recognized that was I was in China and I did a picture in the emperor suit outside of Tiananmen Square. Um, and that was kind of like my first viral moment, if you would say, or my coordination, um, at least to the black travel world of, you know, saying, oh, like this guy exists. And I was like, oh, you guys exist. There's community around here. I didn't even recognize that there was community because I was doing things by myself. Um, and so that's how the John Robert was kind of born and, and kind of who you see now. Okay, so I, let, let's get the, the haters out the way because they say, hold on, hold on. His brother said his parents were missionaries, so they were traveling. Okay, churches and different organizations can support that. 
but he's making it look a lot different and, 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 and you know, beautiful in different places that the missionaries might not have gone for a long time, you know, because when you're on trips or any type of mission, you're on a mission, you got a plan. But how did it get to where you found a way to say, you know what, um, I can afford this? Because we know you have the travel company and the yacht company, but I'm sure those weren't given to you. Um, but tell the people so they can kind of replicate it. And I say that because me and my family, we travel and people ask like, hey, how do you do that? And I say, what? How do you fly like that? I say, well, savings. I don't have Jordans. <laughs> you know, I don't have a 90 inch TV. Um, I don't have a Mercedes or anything like that. Um, so you have all that stuff and maybe that's where your money goes. So I want you to kind of make it cl clear and plain for those who, you know, you might have all that. You might have the Jordans and the 90 inch and all that, Rolex, all that, right? So give us the game on how your average traveler can travel with you on your trips, on your tours and how you do it. Yeah, so I think you hit the nail on the head. I mean, it's, life is about priorities. And that's one of the things that we all have to learn and we know, right, as adults. Um, and this is why we know that there's people and I know some of those people, and there's nothing against them, but I know some people who live in the projects that wear Jordans, right? And not saying that is bad, not saying that is good, it's just saying that people buy and afford what they want to afford. An average pair of Jordan costs $200, right? Um, I own one pair of Jordans, and they were a gift to myself after I reached 35,000 followers. <laughs> um, that was just something, it was a pair that I've been wanting, and to be quite honest, I haven't even put those shoes on yet uh, because I haven't gone anywhere where I felt they were appropriate to wear. Um, and so I think it's just one living um, within your means or below your means. I'm not looking to stunt. I don't own anything designer. Um, I'm not looking to make millionaires rich off of myself. And so that allows me to put money in where I find value. And I find value being able to be um, tap into culture and food and and just um, move through life without the filter of America in front of me. Uh, and, and in some regards, I tell a lot of people travel with my protest um, because the more I travel, the more I recognize how, uh, for lack of a better word, ghetto America is and that we think are normal or we've tolerated or that we've come to accept are not the same things, you know, across the board and across the world. Um, and so it's, it exposes so much of that. Also, you know, use websites for a lot of times, like I have destinations I want to go to, but I also am strategic. So I use um, like Scott's Cheap Flights is a pretty good website because they'll send you things and you don't even have to join the membership program. You can just join and get emailed. Um, you can use Skyscanner, which is another great way to find cheap flights. Um, and then my favorite, which I had to stop looking at because I was going crazy because I was buying flights like every five days. <laughs> <laughs> and now I can't even think of it because I had to literally had to cut myself off because it was like it was a I was a fiend <laughs> and it was a drug. Um, oh my goodness. I have to come back to you on that one because I can't now because I literally had to cut myself off. But what it does, flights um, from various places, and that's the other thing I tell people to do. Like, if you live close to regional or airport, don't be afraid to check out if another airport may be cheaper. And a great example of that is living in Charlotte. Charlotte is one of the most expensive airports in the country because of American Airlines lockdown on it, the hub. And Forbes actually did an article on it. But if you go down the street to Raleigh Durham, sometimes I found you can find half the price or even one third of the price of the same flight in Charlotte. You know, so it's like, hey, do I mind driving two hours, you know, two and a half hours to save a thousand dollars? Absolutely. So like when I went to China, my flight was four hundred dollars round trip from Raleigh, but that same flight from Charlotte was about two thousand dollars, and it's the same flight. <laughs> same and is that all, is that all on 
Scott's cheap flights, which I know that site, but I even find Google flights in incognito mode to be, you know, awesome as well. But was that all off Scott's? Is Scott's your exclusive? Maybe you may need to send you a check. Um, but is is it all from there is where you find your flights? So Scott's is not the, um, pardon me one second. Scott's mm -hmm. is uh, not my main, um, my main it's kind of like my side piece I, I use google flights as well but uh i prefer to oh my goodness it is so crazy i can i'm having a brain a brain for it right now um i have the app on my phone give me one second okay no worries no worries. I'm trying to get you guys the game while he looks this up because you guys, I will not be able to answer every DM message. What did he say? What was that site, Kevin? Why didn't you go deeper? So give the brother a second. Let you know, let him give the game properly. Take some time. Um, and we just breathe and enjoy. Cause, cause yeah. yeah. $400 to China. My best flight was like 500, 550 San Francisco to London, but this was way back in the gap round trip. And so 400 from, whoo, I'm like, that's a, that's a deal and a steal and a lot further. Yeah, it's, um, there it is. Ooh. It's secretsflying.com. <laughs> Secret, yes, 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 yes. S S secret flying i think they used to be free i don't know if i think they might have started charging but um secret flying is his go-to he gave you the game you guys can go hit him up and um bless him for that game so t tell me this though it's not that you're just traveling it's that you're documenting it and it looks like you're you have a full maybe camera crew with your lighting being so perfect. I, I caught you in the, the bathtub with somebody's daughter. Yeah, I, I, I saw the quote. And, you know, no faces, no cases is what it says, y'all. He, he doesn't want anybody chasing him down. Talk about how you do that, because that's not cheap to do. Is someone traveling with you all the time or do you find people while you're there? So um, sometimes I travel with other content creators. Um, and what I like about that is it's like any, any kind of art. Whenever you have other artists in the room, you just get new perspective, new ideas, um, fresh thinking. Um, and so you're able to lean off of each other. You're able to sharpen your souls against each other. Um, and so sometimes I do that. Um, and that moment, um, we had another friend who was with us. We were just finishing a, a trip in Panama where another friend of ours was doing a competition kind of event of three days, which was total tons of fun. Um, different missions, you had a teammate, kind of a survivor kind of thing, but it was in Panama. And so after, the, after that, um, we came to the city, we were inside of Panama City and we wanted to go and get some content throughout the city. And so we're at the W Hotel, which is notorious for those huge bathtubs, huge rooms in Panama. And so one of our friends shot the shot. I um, directed exactly what I want. I'm very meticulous when it comes to that. Um, and then sometimes I do travel or I'll hire someone, you know, and you can hire people through uh, Airbnb experiences. You can hire people through a lot of times I tell people if you're so um, if you're going to a different country, um, you can sometimes go to like their visiting bureaus page. So like visit Portugal or visit Morocco and you'll see that they'll have tons of content sometimes from local photographers or videographers. And then you can like message them and say, hey, I'm coming to town. I saw that you shot at this place. What would you charge to, you know, um, shoot me or, you know, these are the ideas that I have. Would you be willing to partner with me in those ideas? Um, and then sometimes I, you know, use tour guides, strangers, <laughs> taxi drivers. You know, sometimes it's whoever's available. I also travel with my own um, tripod that also allows me to uh, have a clicker so I can set up, set it up, get in the frame, click it. And then if you have Apple, um, I use my iPhone a lot. Uh, also, my Apple Watch will show me what the picture looks like while it's set up so I can look at it to make sure I'm in frame 
and then hit it and it takes the picture. Um, so there's a there's a gamut of things that I use and all of those are tactics. Um, I d- can't afford to hire someone on every trip, but I do find people who are able to um, record what I want. And oftentimes I'll show them what I want and then ask them to do it. Well, you can't, you might not be able to do it now, but tomorrow is a whole different thing because let me just say for Netflix and anybody else who's giving out deals, this is the only brother that you're going to find swimming with. I would do this, but most black men and black folk would be like, he's swimming with turtles, y'all. He's out there swimming with things that you say, wait, hold on. You, you, you know, I'm sure your auntie or somebody called, uh, John, are you sure that was safe? And they were going to bite you and, and stop pushing the limits. Like, give us the game on, you know, the pushback from the community because you've turned yourself into, you are a full influencer model doing things that Bear Grylls or Andrew Bourdain, may rest in peace, or Andrew Zimmerman. Like, I, I get it. And I love it because I'm sure somebody said, man, you're too big for all that, man. Sit down. You can't don't don't do that. So give us the game just on what I had just talked about all of it, however you want to reply. It's interesting because I've heard those whispers, but they've never made it to me. Right. Um, I think the, the first thing that I want to be an example to is to all people, but especially to black men that struggle, that strife is not our portion. It is not our birthright. And I think, you know, a lot of our experiences have been marred and been filtered through the experience of America, right? And what we've been taught about ourselves and who we should be and how we should show up in spaces. And and so like I was speaking earlier earlier about travel being my protest, it's also showing um, the world that I belong here. Like this is just as much as mine as it's yours. And I approach it with such fearlessness and zest um, and swag that only a black person could have. (laughs) Because you know, the one thing I love about us is anytime we touch something, it takes a new dimension it takes a new level. It's like, and and that's not just in, you know, arts, that's just not in performing, that's in medicine, that's in science, that's in so many things that when we do things, we just elevate the experience. Um, and so that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to create a space that I felt was safe for people who may feel marginalized, who may not have the perfect body, may not you know, feel that they've always been accepted in society and, and tear away those truths and tear away those narratives. You know, I'm not skinny, I don't have abs, I'm trying to get them, you know, but I love who I am where I am in this current moment. And if I never have abs, I can still love me and still believe that I belong and still can wear a Speedo. And the funny thing about the Speedo, which I get a lot of questions about, was I was very uncomfortable with my body. I was always a big guy. Um, and we know in society how like being a big person is, is portrayed as like this negative thing, X, Y, Z, at least in the United States, actually. In other countries, it shows well because it means you're eating. So, uh, and so one of the things that I started doing that was because it forced me to look at the things that I did not like about myself. So it was not for anybody else. It was not trying to, you know, try to set somebody up to go in the DMs. It was really me forcing myself to look at me and say, you are beautiful, you are worthy. And anything that tells you anything less than that is not something that you need to be um, listening to or even in your sphere of influence. And so uh, that's my approach. That's how I move around the world. So I'm going to swim with, you know, alligators, crocodiles, whatever. I'm going to feed, you know, (laughs) flamingos on the beach. I'm going to do all of that. and I, I do take some risk. I think life is about risk, but being a black man in America is a risk, right? I can walk down the street and be shot just because somebody had a bad day at work, you know? Uh, so I also feel like if I'm going to go, you know, I'll go on my own terms. So I've had people like, man, you crazy. You laying with lions. With that lion would have took your face off. And I'm like, it'd have been a great story. <laughs> <laughs> but 
like having that fearlessness to be your authentic self is the biggest thing that I want people to pull away from because we allow, we live in so many boxes our entire life. And I, I tell people this, our first box started at home. Um, our trauma for everyone, no matter how good, how great your parents were started at home. And an example of that is, you know, if you grew up in a family like mine, you probably heard one of the points that if little Johnny jumps off the bridge, will you jump too, right? And so it was like, taught you, be your own self. Don't do what everyone else is doing. And so then you go and do something that feels authentically you, but it doesn't feel authentically you to your parents. And like, well, why are you doing that? Why are you wearing that? And why are you doing that? But I thought you told me to be, your, be my authentic self. No, what you meant was you created this container for me. And as long as I'm my authentic self in the box that you created for me to be in, you're okay with that. But as soon as I step out the realm or make you uncomfortable with me being my authentic self, then we have issues. And so we go through life going from box to box, whether it's jobs, whether it's um, relationships, just being what people ideal of us or what we think they want us to be versus being our authentic selves. And then we become 30 year adults and have no idea who we are, or when we try to love someone and realize that we never even loved ourselves. And so for me, it's deep, but the travel has exposed all these things for me and has allowed me to take all those bars, all those limits off, all those filters, and just experience life authentically for myself. And that's what I desire for all of my brothers and sisters. It may not be going to Morocco, it may not be going to Egypt, but being able to live your life your most authentic self and not being constrained to the ideas that people have put on you. Amen. I think we found the title for your book and then movie um, right then with that, you know, soliloquy, because that's that's real. I've, I've always been a little, you know, they say different, odd, whatever, but I, I'm just being me. And, and let, can I be me? And so I love that and totally overstand it. Talk about, have you started jotting down the book, um, you know, putting more time into the YouTube or, you know, what's the, the next step so others can read, watch and listen and, you know, hear about this uh, marvelous life that you're having and the best is yet to come. <laughs> so I have not started writing the book. I actually have another book that I want to write that's not related to travel. It's actually related to dating. Uh, <laughs> we'll get the travel book out, but I think what's next is actually I'm working on a podcast um, to kind of talk about some of the things that you and I are talking about now and just sharing the truth, you know, and tapping into spirituality, tapping into um, healing. You know, I feel like that is our, I think the first thing we have to do to be new people is to, to go back and erase a lot of trauma and damage that has happened to us um, passively. Um, some we know that some we don't even recognize, right? And I think, you know, in, in, that, in that space, I do, and I'll say this, I do believe that colorism, racism exists in every corner of the world. What I will say is I've never experienced it outside of the United States. Now, I've had other people who have. I won't carry that banner because that is not my truth. Um, and I always challenge other people to not go through life with the filter of racism in America and go view the entire world through that lens because you do yourself a disservice, right? And so for me, I've never encountered racism knowingly outside of the United States of America. That's, that's my truth. That's not everyone's experience, that is my experience. Um, I'm not naive to not say it doesn't exist, but I, it's not my experience. And so I also think sometimes because we're so sore in areas, we're very sensitive. So someone could just be like, oh, it's down this way and be very curt. Like for example, Russians, their language, they could tell you I love you and it sounds like they couldn't. Like it's just curt. It's very similar to like Jamaicans, like Jamaicans start very curt. And they're very straightforward. And sometimes that can come across as like, they don't care or they're being, you know, short. And it's like, no, this is just a cultural thing, right? And so I always challenge people, other travelers to step back, remove the lens, 
of 400 years of slavery, which I know is very, very hard because we don't know anything but that, and try to experience everything for yourself and uniquely. And so for me, the podcast will be next. I'll be talking about travel. I'll be talking about life, healing, journey, um, becoming the better sense of ourselves, because I think so many of us need to hear that, um, especially our Black brothers, especially our Black men. Um, and, and so that's going to be the next thing. I also have a project that I am working on that potentially may make your television. So, um, I have some meetings today. That's one of the reasons why I'm in LA to talk about that. So there's some things stirring. Um, I'm forever grateful for, um, people, you know, giving me a platform and seeing the value in which I create, um, but the travel book is, is not something that is going to be done anytime soon. I'll tell you that. Um, I think that is that story is still being written. And I have some other things that I want to share that I feel like will help um, people today. I got you. I got you. And what is a book when you say podcast? Because it can be a full audio book or all your podcasts that you're going to do merged in. It doesn't have to, again, look like everybody else's. Um, but if Penguin wants to come write that, you know, seven, eight figure check, maybe that helps encourage it. Penguin, I'm just throwing that out there because when I see this brother over here talking with, uh, talk, and I say talking with, the llamas and it might have been the vicuña for all i know i want two of those if you ever come across because i need some new jackets and that wool is just too expensive but <laughs> but um I, I want that but i what you're doing is i mean yeah i can't wait tv would be crazy to say no and not make sure i mean finance your life because you've shown what you can do with your budget just think if they put the gas on that right Boom, to the moon, here's, here's to the, the moon. Here's, here's the thing with that. Everything comes at a cost, right? Mm -hmm. um, and when you support yourself, it's almost like an independent artist versus being with a label, right? There are going to be certain things that are conversations that the label may want you to have or you can't have to make others comfortable about being in your presence or about what you project. And in this moment, in this season of my life, I'm not looking to make others comfortable about with me. If you're not comfortable with me, I'm just not for you. Um, and so with my understanding of that, uh, I am open to a platform uh, allowing me and creating the avenue for me to make residual income and also further spread um, what I do. However, it also needs to be authentically who I am and and it, it can't be you know watered down to, to make it more palatable to a particular audience and i'm just not going to do that so um <laughs> that's 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 if you'd have caught me maybe four years ago that i'd have been gave you a dog and pony show but just in this space that i'm in right now um i'm not looking to do that a lot of people are looking for black stories right now you know especially after the background of of george floyd and I think it's a gift um, because I feel like when you see yourself and see stories, it helps you realize that we're all human, we're all have similar experiences. Um, but also sometimes it can become a fad, right? You know, we're gonna make sure Black Lives Matter, everyone's saying it. And I'm like, yeah, but when I look at, I hear you say that, I see that on your Instagram, but I look at your board and don't just don't see any diversity. Or I look at your executive, executives and I don't see any diversity, or I don't see, you say Black Lives Matter, but when I look at where you spend your money and who you support, those people don't say that. And so um, <laughs> I'm, I'm just a little, little more heightened on how I want my brand to look and what it represents. I mean, if you look, I have not stepped in Europe um, in two years. Uh, I, I'm technically going to be there tomorrow on social media, but I've been pushing out because I feel like oftentimes, um, especially in the U.S., we've always were shown Africa, disease, flies flying around, people with fat stomachs, under a hood, poverty. And that exists. That exists in Africa. Yes, it does. It also exists in America. You can go right down the slots in, in L.A. You can, we, we have Jackson, Mississippi, that doesn't even have clean water. 
I can't tell you if the issue in Flint is resolved with clean water, right? Um, but also beauty exists in Africa. The clearest water I've ever seen in my life, I tell people, Tanzania and, and Zanzibar, right? Um, and it's the same water that's in the Maldives. You know, it's the same Indian Ocean. And, the, and it's those things that I just kind of want to expose and pull back um, the lies that we've been told that there's not beauty in, in, on the continent. There's 54 countries uh, that speak tons of languages, tons of terrain, anything you could want and find from pristine beaches to mountaintops to ski slopes to safaris you can find in Africa. And I think it's important as someone who has a platform to push the continent um, from a tourism standpoint. And so uh, I'm open to, to books and deals, but it has to be, I'm not selling out or copying out for a dollar. It's just not what I'm looking to do. <laughs> I, I, I totally overstand that. That's what happens, y'all, when you the, the, the pops are pissed in and you know your purpose. You can say no when it don't feel right. So you don't have to feel like it's a step and fetch show. Let me let me ask you, because, you know, you were talking about the um, Europeans and we'll be in Europe next month. Um, and I'm trying to have my baby say, switch over. Don't celebrate your birthday there. We've been there before. Let's go somewhere different. Let's let's go somewhere. Let's at least hit Morocco, right? Because I always want to be in Africa. But, um, it, you know, you got to please your, your kids and give them choice so they know that they do have choice. Because um, I am going for the coolest dad uh, award live, you know, just letting y'all know. But when you think about... <laughs> When you think about what Africa, what's happening uh, last year, me and my kids, my wife is an African, so it's different for, for her. She didn't need it, but we got our citizenship from Sierra Leone. That's the flag in the back behind the Cameroonian lion. Um, have you looked into the African ancestry DNA um, and getting a citizenship possibly from one of these countries and or a residency? Yes, yeah, so I haven't, did, I haven't done either. Um, I have some more questions about these this DNA because I've heard a lot of mixed reviews on accuracy. Um, and so I know there's recently been a, a company that does strategically black people. Um, and so I wanted to do, <clears throat> excuse me, a little more research on, on them um, because I also know in America, we love fads and so things become popular and they'll send you something and you'd be like, okay, this thing, you know, so I want to make sure that when I do it, it is the most accurate, but it is something that is high on my to-do list because I'm, I am intrigued. Um, and, and it's funny you say that I was at a party um, two days ago here in LA and um, I had some of God's grass, which allowed me to reflect. And I, in this moment, I was just looking at all these beautiful black people that were there but just seeing the difference in each of us and wondering what nations we belong to. And it was such a like heightened moment. Like usually you're at a party, that's not what you're thinking about, right? But I was just stepping back and observing, you know, there were like brothers who were like six feet and they had wider noses and they were like sisters who were like, and just like wondering like what nation would they be from? What tribe is this? Um, so it's definitely something that I am um, wanting to do and definitely curious about. I just want it to be accurate and that, you know, tell me that, you know, I'm 90% Native American and 2% Dutch and like, you know, so, I, so that's that. And then the well, second- I Oh, go ahead. The second thing was, um, you said DNA. What was the other thing? I, I forgot. I'm sorry. Oh, the, the, the citizenships. You know, once you do your DNA with, again, it's African Ancestry is the black owned company and the mo the beautiful uh, Gina Page inside and out. She's the one who her and Diallo have hooked all of us up who've been able to do it. But um, if not citizenship, residency, just so if you feel you want to stay, because going to your point, you look at all the people, but how many of those people really know who they are, what they know about Africa, right? So we're a lot of times fish out of water in America, unless you know who you are, because immigrants know who they are, because they can tie it back to a story. They've seen the soil, they've tasted the meat over in Africa and say, this is a lot fresher, like most things, than here in America. So we don't know who we are. So we're pretending to be something, but the things that we do, 
in Africa, it's normal, it's regular, and it's so many different things. I don't want to go on a list because brothers say, well, what you mean, killing, having more than one woman? Nah, because you can't afford more than one woman on that $30,000 salary, man. A chief got to be able to afford them wives. So, you know, it's it's just, it's, it's just, you know, that, that just being able to stay. And is there a place in Africa that you say, you know what, I could stay here? Yeah, so I really... It's controversial where I like. <laughs> no, it's not because your opinion. Yeah, it's it's well, it's controversial due to its history, um, and and I really enjoy Cape Town, South Africa. Um, I'm a I love being by water. I, that's something that centers me. That it's a and it's an aphrodisiac for me. It's just something that I know that <clears throat> wherever I end up is it will be close to where I can get to water. Um, and so like having the mountains of Cape Town um, and then having a city life, but then also having pristine beaches and be able to go to Penguin Beach and Boulder Beach. Um, I really, really love Cape Town. Um, there's still some undercurrent of, you know, the racism, you know, apartheid ended in the 90s. Like that sounds crazy, but <laughs> like apartheid ha hasn't even been what done for 20 years now. Um, and so there's still some undercurrent of how they treat some of the black people who are there versus like black tourists, um, you know, or black Americans. Um, and so that's why I say it's a little controversial, just, you know, based on, on those things. Um, what I always tell people is there can always be two things can be true at the same time. And I think we live in a culture where we always look to only make one thing true, but two things can be true at the same time. America can be the land of opportunity for one person, but also be the land of despair for another person, right? Uh, you know, an education system, a classroom could be a great learning place for one person, but be a hindrance for another person. Someone like me, I was always a creative. So anything in school that allowed me to be creative, I excelled in. Anything that had no ability to have any change uh, or it was law, those are the things I struggled at because it didn't allow me to tap into the, my creativity. And with our education system, it, it is designed for one kind of person. It's not designed for different types of brilliant minds, right? Um, and so it's, it's those kind of things where you say, you know, two things can be true. So a land could be refuge for you and not be and be a jail for someone else. So I just wanna say that to people because all of our experiences are different. Um, and, and that's what I find in the travel space and the travel world, uh, that we are in charge of finding that place for us and not necessarily what others think of it, but what we think of it. Um, so Cape Town, I like parts of Morocco. Um, I still wanna explore, I'm going to Accra this year. Uh, more of Africa, you know, there's 54 countries. I've been to six, um, no, I've been to eight now. Eight of the 54, so there's still a lot to tap into and see and expose myself to, to feel like, you know, where do, what, where do I see home and the motherland being? Um, so yeah, that's one of my journeys too, is to, you know, make sure that I get a new country every year in Africa, even as I do group trips to the same countries for other people. And anybody who hates on him like in Cape Town, just please come bring that smoke to me because I, I I want that. Because when you see the Rockefeller building in, in Cape Town and see that if you invest $100,000 and they'll guarantee you 85% of your occupancy, so it's not too much money to lose. Or when you see the penguins, you're like, man, I can't wait to bring my kids over here to see them. Like Cape Town, it's ours still. The Dutch and certain, you know, and the the Jews, which I consider myself part of the 12 tribes, um, they, they might be over there and not sell you some land, but there is ways to get it. But you got to have some finances. You got to have some monies. You And so money at the end of the day, if you have money, oh, that racism and tribalism sometimes disappears in those circles because you have access. That's why it's for the person who's not making a ton of money here in America your money will double, triple, quadruple, and more, and you can get more to explore. That's the beauty of Africa, plus it's home. 
It's home. So if you don't come with the colonizer mindset, which John doesn't seem like he's he's over there tapping in with the animals and the people, you know, um, that's somebody else's um, daughter. It's a play on a song. Actually, it's a, I believe she's uh, Daphne. I believe it's a Daphne Cameroonian song. Um, one day I'll be somebody's daughter or whatever. But you got something and I could go on and on, but I want them to go check out your podcast when it's ready. And I hope it's ready soon because I'm going to be cutting up over there. I need to have the best conversations offline, y'all. Some things I can't say because some things I see that are only for John and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, I don't want y'all all in his mix and him telling all his business. So John, let the people know where they can go to find, follow you, tap in and book one of those tours or one of those yachts. No, I didn't get into the yacht yet. That can be for part two. You might see me in one in the studio and I'm waiting for y'all to hate on me, you know, like Jill Scott says. <laughs> so give him the game. Find me on Instagram. It's the or the uh, John Robert. It's J O N, no H, uh, no need for silent letters. Uh, Robert, uh, that's the same on TikTok. That's also my website, thejohnrobert.com. Um, and then for yachts, you can go to yachtclub.company. Um, and that's also our name on Instagram, is Yacht Club Company. Um, that's where you can find us or find me, you know, depending on what you're looking for. <laughs> you guys have been blessed by the game. Share this with somebody. It will change their life. Hey, family, on November 20th through December 1st, 2022, we will have the all inclusive Kenya trip. Now, a lot of times people have said, hey, Phil, when's the next trip we'd like to go? I want to see Africa for myself, but well, this is the time to go. Everything will be taken care of. All the excursions are paid. You can do monthly payments. You know, they'll have a safari and a six city tour. You will see Charlie Island, which is something that we did not see last time on the tour. This tour will be 12 days instead of seven days. So make sure to secure your place on the trip by going to www.wbsvs.com, make your deposit, and then you can start making your payments and we'll see you in Kenya. Are you tired of the violence, tired of the injustice, police brutality, rampant discrimination, lack of gun control in this failed by a socioeconomic experiment called America? Or maybe you need a break from the relentless grind and want to regain control of your destiny, your wealth, your health, and your purpose. Diversifiedgame.com has the right course for you. Prepare for my first trip to Africa. Looking to reconnect with your roots, start a new business, or just a fresh start. Africa, AKA the motherland is waiting. Don't let the Chinese and the Mazungus have the fun and also take over the motherland. From Cairo to Mombasa, from Dakar to Cape Town, Africa has something for everyone from business opportunities to the most amazing people, safety, leisure, and landscapes. The opportunities abound. It is time for the diaspora to reconnect with their roots. Time to reconnect with the birthplace of humanity. Africa is the last frontier. Get your head in the game and reclaim your legacy. The writing is on the wall. Babylon is falling. Give up the stress, grind and violence inflicted on our people on this continent and prepare for a journey of restoration and joy by connecting with the land of your ancestors. Check out our new course and kick off your adventure at diversifiedgame.com.